Book 5. Gong Ye Chang. Chapter 1. 1. The master said of Kung Yi Chang that he might be wived, although he was put in bonds, he had not been guilty of any crime. Accordingly, he gave him his own daughter to wife. 2. Of Nan Young he said that if the country were well governed he would not be out of office, and if it were ill governed, he would escape punishment and disgrace. He gave him the daughter of his own elder brother to wife. Chapter 2. The master said of Tse Qian, of superior virtue indeed is such a man. If there were not virtuous men in Lu, how could this man have acquired this character? Chapter 3. Tse Kung acts, what do you say of me, Sze? The master said, you are a utensil. What utensil? A gemmed sacrificial utensil. Chapter 4. 1. Someone said, Young is truly virtuous, but he is not ready with his tongue. 2. The master said, What is the good of being ready with the tongue? They who encounter men with smartnesses of speech for the most part procure themselves hatred. I know not whether he be truly virtuous, but why should he show readiness of the tongue? Chapter 5. The master was wishing Chai Tiao Ke to enter on official employment. He replied, I am not yet able to rest in the assurance of this. The master was pleased. Chapter 6. The master said, My doctrines make no way. I will get upon a raft, and float about on the sea. He that will accompany me will be you, I dare say. Tse Lu hearing this was glad, upon which the master said, Yu is fonder of daring than I am. He does not exercise his judgment upon matters. Chapter 7. 1. Mang Wu asked about Tse Lu, whether he was perfectly virtuous. The master said, I do not know. 2. He asked again, when the master replied, In a kingdom of a thousand chariots, you might be employed to manage the military levies, but I do not know whether he be perfectly virtuous. 3. And what do you say of Chiu? The master replied, in a city of a thousand families, or a clan of a hundred chariots, Chiu might be employed as governor, but I do not know whether he is perfectly virtuous. 4. What do you say of Chai? The master replied, with his sash girt and standing in a court, Chai might be employed to converse with the visitors and guests, but I do not know whether he is perfectly virtuous. Chapter 7. 1. The master said to Tse Kung, which do you consider superior? yourself or way. 2. Tse Kung replied, How dare I compare myself with Wei? Wei hears one point and knows all about a subject. I hear one point, and know a second. 3. The master said, You are not equal to him. I grant you, you are not equal to him. Chapter 9. 1. Sai Yu being asleep during the daytime, the master said, Rotten wood cannot be carved. A wall of dirty earth will not receive the trowel. This you. What is the use of my reproving him? 2. The master said, At first, my way with men was to hear their words, and give them credit for their conduct. Now my way is to hear their words, and look at their conduct. It is from you that I have learned to make this change. Chapter 10. The master said, I have not seen a firm and unbending man. Someone replied, There is Shan Chang. Chang, said the master, is under the influence of his passions. How can he be pronounced firm and unbending? Chapter 11. Tse Kung said, What I do not wish men to do to me, I also wish not to do to men. The master said, Sze, you have not attained to that. Chapter 12. Tse Kung said, the master's personal displays of his principles and ordinary descriptions of them may be heard. His discourses about man's nature and the way of heaven cannot be heard. Chapter 13. When Tse Lu heard anything, if he had not yet succeeded in carrying it into practice, he was only afraid lest he should hear something else. Chapter 14. Tse Kung asked, saying, On what ground did Kung Wan get that title of Wan? The master said, he was of an active nature and yet fond of learning, and he was not ashamed to ask and learn of his inferiors. 
On these grounds he has been styled Wan. Chapter 15. The master said of Tse Chan that he had four of the characteristics of a superior man. In his conduct of himself, he was humble. In serving his superiors, he was respectful. In nourishing the people, he was kind. In ordering the people, he was just. Chapter 16. The master said, Yen Ping knew well how to maintain friendly intercourse. The acquaintance might be long, but he showed the same respect as at first. Chapter 17. The master said, Sang Wan kept a large tortoise in a house, on the capitals of the pillars of which he had hills made, and with representations of duckweed on the small pillars above the beams supporting the rafters. Of what sort was his wisdom? Chapter 18. 1. Tse Chang acts, saying, the minister Tse Wan thrice took office, and manifested no joy in his countenance. Thrice he retired from office, and manifested no displeasure. He made it a point to inform the new minister of the way in which he had conducted the government. What do you say of him? The master replied. He was loyal. Was he perfectly virtuous? I do not know. How can he be pronounced perfectly virtuous? 2. Tse Chang proceeded. When the officer Chui killed the prince of Chai, Chan Wan, though he was the owner of forty horses, abandoned them and left the country. Coming to another state, he said, they are here like our great officer, Chui, and left it. He came to a second state, and with the same observation left it also. What do you say of him? The master replied, he was pure. Was he perfectly virtuous? I do not know. How can he be pronounced perfectly virtuous? Chapter 19. Kai Wan thought thrice, and then acted. When the master was informed of it, he said, twice may do. Chapter 20. The master said, when good order prevailed in his country, Ning Wu acted the part of a wise man. When his country was in disorder, he acted the part of a stupid man. Others may equal his wisdom, but they cannot equal his stupidity. Chapter 21. When the master was in Chan, he said, Let me return. Let me return. The little children of my school are ambitious and too hasty. They are accomplished and complete so far, but they do not know how to restrict and shape themselves. Chapter 22. The master said, Po I and Shu Chai did not keep the former wickednesses of men in mind, and hence the resentments directed towards them were few. Chapter 23. The master said, Who says of Wei Shang Kao that he is upright? One begged some vinegar of him, and he begged it of a neighbor and gave it to the man. Chapter 24. The master said, Fine words, an insinuating appearance, and excessive respect. So Chiu Ming was ashamed of them. I also am ashamed of them. To conceal resentment against a person, and appear friendly with him. So Chiu Ming was ashamed of such conduct. I also am ashamed of it. Chapter 25. 1. Yan Yuan and Kai Lu being by his side, the master said to them, Come, let each of you tell his wishes. 2. Tse Lu said, I should like, having chariots and horses, and light fur dresses, to share them with my friends, and though they should spoil them, I would not be displeased. 3. Yan Yuan said, I should like not to boast of my excellence, nor to make a display of my meritorious deeds. 4. Tse Lu then said, I should like, sir, to hear your wishes. The master said, They are, in regard to the aged, to give them rest. In regard to friends, to show them sincerity. In regard to the young, to treat them tenderly. Chapter 26. The master said, It is all over. I have not yet seen one who could perceive his faults and inwardly accuse himself. Chapter 27. The master said, In a hamlet of ten families, there may be found one honorable and sincere as I am, but not so fond of learning. 